Today I'm going to show you something really cool which I recently came across while nerding out on this handy mapping application, Visualizing Victoria's Groundwater. This free online tool gives us an interesting underground glimpse beneath Victoria, using bore data which has been presented in this brilliant interactive map. Each of these points are bores which have been drilled throughout history, some very recent, and some dating back well into the 19th century. The feature which I find most interesting about these bores is the data which has been recorded under the lithology section. This tells us the different layers of ground that was drilled through in each location. Not all bores have this data recorded and presented in this application, but some have, and they provide us with some very interesting insights into the depth and composition of the ground beneath an area. So the first thing I'm going to show you, which I think is just ridiculously cool, is an interesting layer which was drilled through in a bore in Timor in 1986, right on the side of the Band of Hope Deep Lead Mine, which operated here on the Chinaman's Flat Lead in the late 19th century. We can see here that the first layer which was recorded was this quartz tailings and wash, which was part of the mine's tailings which still remains on the surface. The bore then sank through many meters of different clay layers, then 5 meters of drift, before hitting a very interesting piece of Goldfield's history hiding beneath the ground. The driller recorded a layer of mine timbers at a depth of 47 meters. These timbers would have been part of the mine's underground supports, which could often be quite substantial in deep lead mines as it helped to hold back dangerous drifts, form puddle walls against seeping groundwater, and support loose ground which was being sank or tunneled through. I think it's pretty excellent that this little century-old layer of history was intercepted and recorded by this driller in the 1980s. If we go take a look at the Band of Hope mine on Geovic, we can see that it was working on the Chinaman's flat lead, not far from the well-known Grand Duke mine. The mine's yield is recorded as 18,589 ounces of gold. Returning to the bore data, this also tells us that the deep lead here was buried by new sedimentary layers, rather than lava flows which buried many of the deep leads across the gold fields, including this one over near Creswick. The impressive remains of the Berry No. 1 deep lead gold mine are a striking roadside feature along the drive between Smeaton and Clunes. This was one of the many massive old gold mines which were operating along the Berry lead, which lay deeply hidden beneath many layers of lava flows. You can see these mine sites following the lead from a fairly remarkable height on Google Earth. This bore was done right near the Berry No. 1 to a depth of 119 meters and intercepted several layers of basalt. A really good look at the layers beneath the beautiful lava plains near Creswick is offered by this bore over on Woolshed Road in Eulina. This driller recorded many layers of basalt, separated by layers of clay which had accumulated in the time between lava flows. This is the sort of ground all these mines had to contend with in the sinking and operation of sub-basaltic deep lead mines. It was certainly not easy going. The Berry No. 1 faced difficulties with large flows of water, heavy drift clogging the pumps, declining yields, foul air, and exhausted capital. Despite its location on the incredibly rich Berry lead, which paid many of the neighboring mines extremely well, this one was described as a spectacular failure. Now, let's go take a look at some shallower ground. This bore over near Maryborough recorded these fairly shallow layers of topsoil, clay, and gravel before hitting bedrock at a depth of 7 meters. The different kinds of alluvial workings throughout this shallow ground around Maryborough are featured in my recent video, Alluvial Gold at Different Depths, which you may find interesting. I'll put a link in the top right as well as in the description below. If you'd like to explore the bore data in this handy online tool, Visualizing Victoria's Groundwater, as well as Geovic, which I used in this video, check out the links in the description below. If you're new to Geovic, I've also got a great tutorial to get you started. Thanks for watching this video, and I'd also like to say thank you to everyone who has subscribed to this channel, and for all the great comments and feedback. There will be plenty more videos about the fascinating history and features of the Victorian goldfields, so if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications.